Hi there, Top Tip Tuesday time again, Bob here from Insidium. On today's video, we're going to be taking a mixing paint simulation that we set up in a previous Top Tip, and we're going to be meshing those particles. And what we're going to do is generate a color vertex map based on the particle color, which we can then access in Redshift to create this really nice mixing paint shader. So let's jump into cinema and we'll begin. In our scene, we have this cached particle sim from a previous top tip. This is our paint mix. So we've got this really nice blending of particle color using our Nexus Blend modifier. But how do we render this? So I'm going to show you how to do this in Redshift, but the same principle for whatever render engine you're using. First of all, we need to mesh these particles and then we need to transfer the color. So let's go to Insidia Max Particles Generators and bring in an open VDB mesher. Uh, we need to drag in all of our emitters. One, two, three. Now we're going to be using vertex color. And with vertex uh, maps, we need a quite dense uh, mesh. The denser your mesh, the higher quality, the higher detail that vertex color data is going to be. So let's just hit NB to reveal the lines. And this isn't a very dense mesh at the moment. So let's go to our mesher and we need to reduce the voxel size to increase the fidelity. So let's put this on, say, one voxel size, which is going to make it really dense. Uh, hit NA. Now we Perhaps wouldn't need the mesh to be this dense if we weren't rendering using a color vertex map, but for this instance we are, so we're going to have a really high detail. Now this is a little bit too blobby at the moment, this mesh. You can see that each individual fluid particle has got quite a large volume of mesh around it. So let's go down to our point radius and reduce this down to a maybe two. Yep, that's looking better. And now we need to smoothen this off. So let's go up to our filters, use filters. We'll get rid of this default median and a good, uh, there are two good fluid filters. There's laplation first. Let's put a laplation on with iterations of say three. And actually I'm going to reduce that down to two. And then we're going to add just a curvature filter as well with one iteration. OK, so that's going to be our mesh. Let's just hit play. And there we've got our fluid mesh going on. Very nice. So now what we need to do is get that particle color and transfer it into this mesh. And the way we do that, we're going to go to our tags options in the mesher and we need to transfer the point color. So let's click on that. And when I do that, if you follow my mouse up to the object manager, we go up to our open VDB mesher and look, a color vertex map has appeared. Let's click on this. And yes, look, that is our mesh and the particle color has been transferred into that mesh. Now, the only other thing we need to do, if we just come in a bit, you can see that it's a little bit noisy around this, uh, the kind of the transition points, and we need to smoothen that off. And we can do that within the mesher. Let's go back to the mesher tags tab where we activated that point color, and we just add some smoothing iterations. Let's put this on, say, 20. And there we have got a nicely smooth transition. So this is our mesh. If I hit NB to show the lines, look, that is our mesh, and we've transferred that particle color into um, the vertices. Brilliant. So now that we have got that, all we need to do is be able to access that vertex color information at render time. So let's go to our Redshift render view. And we're going to, let's just dock this here and hit play to start rendering. And there we have got our objects rendering with our mesh, but we need a material on here, obviously, don't we? So let's go to our material manager. We've got a pre-made simple material here to put on our mesher. Now, this is a subsurface scattering material, really simple, uh, but obviously we don't want it to be green. So let's just have a look at the settings. If we double click here, we get our node. So what we have here is, this is a very basic look, there's just some reflection. And then if we go to the subsurface options, we have a weight of one, scale of four with this green color, but we don't want that. We want to pipe in that vertex color. So let's hold control, click on here. If we, when we do that, it creates an input so we can feed in color instead of just using this green. 
and um, let's double click and we need a vertex let's type in vertex a vertex attribute node let's drag this here and all this vertex attribute is it means that we can um, read a vertex map basically and get that data so with the vertex attribute selected here are its settings and all we need to do is drag the vertex map into this link field so let's drag that in there and if we solo this yes look now our vertex color is in our map excellent so all we need to do is pipe this into our subsurface color and there we go excellent let's close that down close that down so now we have our mesh we have our vertex color information being passed into our subsurface um, shader in our redshift material and there we have our mixed fluid paint simulation rendered in redshift with that vertex color map info